Okay, great. Um, so, a uh, very warm welcome to all of you, um, to the family of UTA. Um, so, this is, will be uh, our first webinar uh, for this year, 2022. My name is Inchi Densforma. I'm a program officer for uh, at ECLE World Secretariat, and together here with my colleagues, Rebecca Wessinghanger and our security development team. Colleagues, uh, we are preparing and hosting this event for, for us. And before we, we, we start the session, I would like to say um, the, the webinar series is always uh, very, uh, I, would, I can call it informal uh, and actually uh, intimate setup we, will, we aim to design for. So really allow us to freely discuss uh, um, and share experience uh, across among different cities. Um, so during the uh, presentations, uh, do feel free to, if you have any urgent question, you can always input either your question in a chat box or you can raise your hand and we can always uh, discuss freely. And after each of presentation, we will also um, allow some time for you. If you have any urgent question you would like to address, we can also discuss that. Otherwise, at the end of all presentation, we have, I think, sufficient time allow us really to get to know each other, also know, learn more about the uh, project presented uh, in this session. So with that being said, um, this webinar is part of the uh, Urban Transition Alliance webinar series in cooperation with Circular Tuku on the equitable circular economy. And the webinar series looks at three specific topics related to equitable sustainability projects. And today's webinar dedicated to the first one, which is city business cooperation and job creation for circular economy. And this is the connected closely to the opportunity dimension of the framework, the, the social equity framework. You can see the diagram on the right side, which we have already dedicated a few sessions last year to discuss. And later, uh, we can also input a link to the um, chat box. So if you're interested, you can take a look of this publication. So moving forward to the speaker today. Um, so for the first presentation, we have Colin. Colin Hughes, who is the um, a policy officer from Glasgow City Council. And Colin today will share with us um, a very successful case in Glasgow called Glasgow Circular Hub. And the hub um, facilitate business engagement for circular economy. And it facilitates sustainable buildings in the city center as a hub to inspire citizens and business to integrate the rethink, reuse, repair, and recycle principles. And for the second round of the presentation, we have several speakers from the city of Pittsburgh to share with us uh, a project called PGH Labs. PGH Labs um, aims to connect local startups companies with the city of Pittsburgh and local authority. So here we have Rebecca, Alan, Trevor, and um, here to share with us about this project. So lastly, we have the speaker, our colleague, senior uh, program officer, Marian Ghana. And throughout her uh, working experience with city of Tuku, and she will share with us and explain how business engagement is very important pillar for the circular Tuku project. So this is kind of an overview uh, of our program today. As I have mentioned, we try to uh, keep more time at the end, allow um, really uh, uh, enough time for discussion. So at the moment we have scheduled 15 minutes for discussion, but hopefully we can save some more time uh, after today. So um, we also have prepared some guiding questions um, uh, for the discussion sessions um, that allow us to, to, to warm up the conversation. So 
I think we can move on, uh, moving forward to our first speaker. Um, so here, um, I will not take up more time, then I will pass my microphone to Colin, and he will share with us uh, the Glasgow Circular Hub. The floor is yours, Colin. Thanks, Yang. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Colin Hughes. I'm a policy officer at Glasgow City Council, and my remit has been to develop the circular economy route map and action plan for the city. And uh, we brought that to the our political council uh, in December 2020, and it was adopted at that point. Uh, so from uh, nine from 2020 onwards, we've been working on the action plan. So at this moment in time, uh, we've brought forward some various actions uh, from the action plan, uh, primarily around uh, things like collaboration, uh, joining the Circular Cities Declaration, uh, which was something that we uh, wanted to do quite quickly after we, we uh, brought the we brought the action, uh, we brought the room up to uh, to the council. Uh, part of the actions, uh, action number one was a sustainable business charter. And that was to identify uh, a lot of the opportunities within the business community and to, to raise awareness of the circular economy and circular economy opportunities uh, for the city. Uh, so we developed a business charter in a uh, collaboration with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and with uh, some of the largest organisations in the city, including Energy, Utilities, uh, Glasgow Airport, uh, the business community uh, membership schemes and also academia within the city. So we got the business charter launched uh, middle of 2021 and we've now got uh, around 20 signatories of some of the biggest manufacturing companies in the area. We've also uh, just launched a circular case study with the OECD uh, and that uh, basically gave us a baseline for the city to give us an understanding of what we have been doing well, the gaps in our governance, and also it gave us an opportunity to see some recommendations that uh, the OECD I thought would be advantageous for us to take forward and give us a framework for future for future work in the city. Uh, our main group in the city uh, involved in things like the, the Circular Hub is uh, Circular Glasgow. And Circular Glasgow is a collaboration between all the, the organisations at the bottom of the screen, where you've got the Chamber of Commerce, Zero Waste Scotland, who are a national body uh, who oversee uh, major uh, interventions around waste and uh, circular uh, activities around the entire country, ourselves in the City Council, uh, the government, and uh, Insight Futures, who's uh, an education team, an education team, and the Circle Economy from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, we've been working on various aspects around. Uh, business intervention, including uh, a toolkit, and that toolkit is seen above. That's, that's showing you the, the, the five kind of uh, areas that we think business would be interested in uh, to uh, activate circular thinking within their own organisations and to obviously raise the awareness and, and try and gain, the, uh, gain some momentum in the, the field of the circular economy. So the, these are the, the, the different sectors that we've, we've targeted over the years uh, and uh, we are undergoing a, a major reskilling and upskilling uh, uh, project this year with the, the Circular Glasgow and the developing the young workforce, which is part of the Chamber of Commerce, the, DW, the DYW. Uh, so that reskilling and upskilling is like, it's one of the major aspects of the circular economy that we want to really instill within the city is something that takes into account the idea of job creation and community wealth building. 
And that job creation is based around high quality jobs and not just jobs basically manning recycling uh, conveyor belts. It's not it's not based not based on that. It's based on uh, trying to uh, re-educate or reskill and upskill the uh, youngsters coming through into the, the workforce. And, and that's that's our our main uh, driver for this. Uh, to do that, we, uh, we launched an, under Circular Glasgow, we launched uh, a couple of initiatives, one called Climate Heroes and My Climate Path, and they came through for the COP26 event last year. Uh, both of them, you know, to really kind of upskill the, the thinking, the knowledge uh, around climate and around uh, the impact that circular economy can have on the climate as well. And we've also got a team of circular ambassadors and there's now 25 circular ambassadors within the city uh, based in uh, all different uh, areas of work uh, within public and private uh, organizations and also social enterprises. And they're to be inspirations uh, for the, the story of the circular economy in Glasgow. And things are beginning to move apace because the toolkit itself is a 220 unique downloads uh, and that's from different organizations within the city to to, uh, to really uh, interact with the with the, the message of the the circular economy uh, just launched recently the uh, the circular economy enabling the transition towards net zero document which is uh, excellent again it's from circular economy themselves and they've put together a, a document that helps us to uh, provide that information to business, uh, to give business inspiration. There are recommendations, there's inspirational case studies for uh, the bus businesses to follow. And there's also advice and guidance about how and what, you know, carbon and, and net zero actually mean to a business and to the, uh, the wider society which has been really uh, well received and, and that is available in the Circular Glasgow website if you would like to uh, interact with that yourself. As part of the Circular Economy uh, programmes, uh, you know, we've uh, developed in sponsorship with Zero Waste Scotland and a group called Beauty Kitchen, a small uh, uh, area within the city called the, the Circular Economy House. And that allows uh, businesses and, and individuals to speak to each other on an informal basis and to identify some opportunities where uh, they can discuss solutions and uh, obstacles around the circular economy in the city. From the city council point of view, we've been driving forward uh, some of the circular activities in the community uh, around reuse and repair and sharing, especially of uh, redundant devices, especially tablets and phones. Uh, and that's uh, been a collaboration across public, private and third sectors. Uh, this is led to target uh, digital exclusion. Uh, one of the major aspects of our route map was around social justice and social inclusion. And we see that training and upskilling has been integral to that. And Community Calling, the project that we've got running just now, is, is doing that just now by distributing these, uh, these redundant phones uh, for free of charge with free data and free uh, minutes on them uh, to allow people to access you know, web and internet uh, facilities that they were maybe excluded from in the early, years of the, early months of the pandemic. And it became quite apparent the that uh, level of exclusion. We're also working uh, as Circular Glasgow alongside uh, the universities and Zero Waste Scotland to develop two initiatives in the city that are hoping to target the construction sector and the textile sector. The construction construction sector, obviously we know that waste is a major input into uh, the carbon impact of the city. So we're looking to create a, a forum, a city forum that will allow us to have discussions going across a, a both private industry, public bodies, 
and also academia to share good practice, to share resources, to share uh, transportation requirements, uh, and to create a much more collaborative and cooperative approach to the circular economy in the city, and to really impact the traditional terms of the way in which we actually approach the construction sector. One of the major impacts to this will be having our a planning department be integral to this, along with our procurement department, in which we uh, go about our own work as a, an organisation. We've got a major, uh, we've got a major budget that impacts the construction sector in the city, and we really want to get more involved in material sharing and and have that embodied as a as a. a as a lesson from cities such as uh, Prague and Milan and also uh, Paris and the way in which they've began to, to really identify these areas uh, in the city as being important to the, uh, the carbon story. The textile sector is something we need to take uh, into uh, consideration. 2025 initiates a landfill ban in Scotland around the textile sector. Uh, which means it becomes far more important for us as a, a local authority to take that into consideration. So we are developing a forum just now uh, with widespread stakeholder uh, consultation. We're going through a retail engagement survey at the moment uh, to gather as much information from that part of the sector as possible. Uh, we also have the universities involved, we have Zero Waste Scotland, the national government, and various groups around, uh, around uh, the international uh, theatre where we have a uh, circle economy and also the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and Real London involved to give us like advice and guidance and give us that kind of uh, uh, support and taking forward the discussions around textiles and what we can do in the city for that. At this moment in time, we have a, a proposal on, uh, on our books to put together a, 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 a textile village in the city at some point over the next few years to really impact the ideas around fibre to fibre remanufacturing of textiles and something that we really want to kind of try to impact ideas around job creation and community wealth building again and we can see that that has uh, been widely uh, it's been widely welcomed in the political arena as something that would be uh, really impactful for the city we're also undergoing a major uh, procurement uh, revision at the moment uh, we're involved with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation looking at doing a circular economy uh, procurement project. Uh, we're almost a year into that project at this moment in time, and it's, uh, it's providing us with the ability to share collaboratively across the international cities and different organisations about how to structure our procurement uh, to get the biggest impact for sustainable and for circular needs. Uh, at this moment in time, the sustainability framework is being uh, reviewed. Uh, the Scottish Government has taken that into consideration and we are at this moment in time going through most of the, the, the uh, commodities that we are responsible for as a major organisation in the city. And we are uh, tightening up the questions, the sustainability tests to ensure that that level of a uh, uh, that level of security and safeguarding for uh, companies who want to enter into contracts with us, they understand the, the levels that we need for them to achieve before the, we can grant them the, uh, the tenders. Capacity building is a huge element to this. We have underwent three or four different uh, capacity building uh, programs at the moment. Carbon literacy is one of the major ones but also uh, we've done circular economy uh, capacity building across all of the procurement officers and the corporate procurement team, which has been really beneficial in helping to shape our commodities as well. And, and that is uh, an ongoing process and we're hoping to have that complete by the middle of this year and we'll have a much stronger procurement framework to work from uh, as we move forward. And that will allow us to influence the local economy uh, to ensure that the local economy, when they interact with 
with our framework that they, they are doing so in the basis of a, a much more circular and sustainable uh, fashion. So the next steps for uh, the circular economy in Glasgow is we move forward, developing an upskilling and reskilling program for Glasgow is essential for us. And that's something that both ourselves and the City Council, the Chamber of Commerce and Zero Waste Scotland, who are all uh, network members of the, the Circular Glasgow Group, have uh, agreed to take forward this year. There's also a programme called Step Up to Net Zero, which will bring uh, a funding stream into uh, to help de deliver some of that upskilling and reskilling in the city. And uh, also we're we're taking forward major projects around the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance about how we quantify and really uh, embed the, the stories around embodied carbon, especially within our planning department. Uh, we're looking at working with C40 around a thriving cities donut economics model as well. And obviously we're ongoing uh, collaboration with the uh, ICLE and the Urban Transitions Alliance. So hopefully that gives you like an, an overview of what we're doing in Glasgow. Uh, I know we're not miles ahead of anybody else and I know we're not miles behind everybody else, but it gives you an idea that we're, I suppose we're on the, we're on the right path and it's definitely only a year and a year and a bit into the, the, the programme for the circular economy and uh, we seem to have made not a bad start to it. So thanks for listening to me. Thank you, Colin. Yeah, I have, to, uh, I have actually think uh, every time when I listen to your presentations, always a, a, a lot of uh, things have been developed um, uh, within your programme and actually it's really comprehensive overview you, you give us. So, um, so as, as I mentioned, we will give a bit more time. I'm sure um, you have already questions uh, to calling, and especially I would encourage uh, all of us also to think about um, the, the the program initiative we have uh, in our city and to measure against the story we hear, and so we can. Uh, ask um, certain of area, maybe we would like to know more uh, that would make a uh, great benefit to our own city. So I stop here and open the floor to you guys. Please just jump in and if you have any comment or question to any specific area. I'll hop in with a question for Colin. Um, you had mentioned the work that you um, are ongoing with your procurement office and how that's going to open up a lot of opportunities um, for your local economy. Um, I was curious if you could share perhaps um, one of the challenges that you discovered um, when partnering with the procurement office that you perhaps didn't consider going into that partnership. Yeah, I think the, the biggest obstacle that we've got, Trevor, is when we undertook, especially internally, when we undertook this, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, revision of procurement, we never really fragmented the procurement groups. We thought by going corporate, we, we called the entire umbrella of groups. We now have to go, there's, a new, there's a new, another four procurement groups internally, just that information them is we need to reach to some of their work as well. To, Cohesion that the be uh, and uh, how I've got to say that the, we did building before we started to commodity and that made a difference because we expected a bit of resistance and a bit of pushback from the officers because they didn't think uh, we had the feeling that they would say this is not my job you know this is your job. You know, you 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 refer us and bring it to us, but they have really embraced the, the actual concept around it. And I also think, along with the capacity building, I think our hosting of COP really brought the the kind of consciousness of the impact to uh, to the kind of climate and and the size of the the itself. You know, 
uh, it can add, it maybe open a few eyes as to the importance of the subject itself. So previously, it may have been something that we, we struggled to get embedded, but uh, it's been really welcomed by the procurement team. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you for sharing. Samir, I see you raised your hand. We you like to come in for a question. Yeah. Thank you so much for the presentation um, and your insights. Um, I would be interested to, um, if you could elaborate a bit more on how you particularly consider to support inclusive business models and where you maybe see potential opportunities and challenges um, that the circular businesses contribute to social equity in, in the city. Yeah, I suppose it's a difficult nut to crack at the moment. Uh, especially because of the pandemic, it creates, created a different dynamic between business and the way business would interact with stability or climate, you know, because they are basically, you know, trying to survive at the moment, you know, as they would, they would see it. Uh, so that has created a bit of inertia uh, in that discussion area. However, we have uh, we've got strong links to the Glasgow Social Enterprise Network and our social enterprise network, uh, it's a not-for-profit, they're not-for-profit organisations. Well, they do make profit, but the profit goes back into establishing the, the actual enterprise themselves that's based on living wage and based on uh, uh, inclusion as well. We want to aim around uh, something that's called the uh, development uh, regeneration framework. Uh, looking to cluster. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, um, the connection is a little bit not stable from your side. Will you Sorry. maybe we try to switch up your video and see if the quality improves? Yeah, but it's just started snowing, so it might be that. Uh, <laughs> can be. But yeah, most of the time it's okay. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Uh, so we, we want to cluster, uh, or we're looking at, at putting a, a cluster into the city where we've got uh, a lot of sustainable and circular uh, businesses or activities in the one area to try and normalize the concept of it uh, and bring more, uh, more uh, promotion of that type of that type of activity in the city. Within the, the actual circular Glasgow movement though, uh, the network we have, uh, it's not just businesses that are involved, social enterprises, community groups are also involved in that network. So there's that collaboration of sharing information and knowledge and resources is already underway underneath the, the circular Glasgow network itself. So uh, we, need to, we need to expand that, we need to make that more visible uh, but also we see that there is a possibility with uh, some changes to our own constitutions internally within the, the city council that we can open up a state and give a state over, you know, give premises and locations over to community groups and to circular businesses or circular uh, social enterprises to allow them to, to establish themselves and and uh, flourish within the city uh, in the knowledge that they would be protected over a period of time rather than under a, a kind of commercial property letting service. So uh, that, that idea is something that is uh, pretty well advanced at the moment uh, and those discussions are ongoing to take that forward. That's just some of the ideas that we, that we have at the moment. Thank you very much, Colin. And just one last comment from my side. I, I personally find the upskilling and reskilling program for job creation is particularly interesting. Because normally, uh, also here in Germany, um, when you're undergoing such a training, usually they, they, they have standardized programs. Uh, designed for what is actually needed now uh, on the market and usually those jobs are not desirable or the program is designed to your personal or professional profile. 
but the attempt here is to 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 link the training job creation to to the emerging market to circular economy and sustainability, which I think is very interesting. So pay attention to the time. I think now we will travel to Pittsburgh. Then I think I would give the floor or microphone first to Rebecca, maybe. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, yeah, thanks for having us, everybody. Um, so we are highlighting today um, our PGH lab program. Um, so I've brought my colleagues Trevor and Allah who run the PGH lab program. Um, and I, so that's run out of our innovation and performance department. And then I sit in our city planning uh, department uh, in the sustainability and resilience division. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, PGH lab, how it works with um, startup businesses, and then how uh, sustainability and resilience partners uh, with specific companies specific to um, in, an environmental focus and uh, for, for the purposes of this uh, presentation uh, of the circular economy. So I'm going to flip it over to Trevor, I believe. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. Um, we have, we've got a quick presentation for you guys today. Um, but to kind of start out, I wanted to cover um, first introductions of myself, uh, Trevor Stahl. I'm the Civic Innovation Specialist um, here at the City of Pittsburgh, um, as Rebecca mentioned, Department of Innovation and Performance. Um, I wanted to cover a little bit um, of our journey up until now with the PGH Lab program. Um, Originally, this was founded in 2016 uh, with Mayor William Perduto uh, as our mayor at the time. We have had seven cohorts for uh, the program thus far. We're currently in our seventh cohort and are ongoing with that. That actually started back in December um, of 2021. So a lot of learnings and happenings going on. Rebecca, in a moment, we'll talk to some of our current companies in the program. Um, Essentially, though, we've had 40 companies find successful placement um, with PGH Lab, but we've had well over 100 companies actually apply. Uh, we've had three executive teams as well that have steered the ship, so to speak, um, with this program. Uh, myself and Ella are currently sitting at the heads here. Um, PGH Lab one of the main goals in its founding was one to kind of uplift uh, local startups within the region, providing them perhaps um, a service or platform where there wasn't one previously, um, specifically with a, a city and government focused twist. Um, it also had the great benefit of allowing us to kind of issue city challenges to perhaps solve some um, unique issues in very innovative ways uh, that we perhaps had not considered before, both for our city departments across the city, as well as our city authorities. Um, PGH Lab falls into kind of fo uh, five main buckets that we look for, for uh, solutions with. Uh, so the first one is resident engagement. So how are we actually engaging with our residents, collecting that feedback, making sure that we really are being good stewards of the public. Um, secondly is our improving operations. So are there ways that we can either save dollars or save time um, in our current processes? Third and kind of the focus of today is, is climate change in the environment. That's really been um, a core principle since the program's founding. Um, so we'll touch a little bit more on that in a moment here. Um, we have two additional categories of one open call. So uh, just as a general call to startups, tell us what you'd like to innovate at the city. Perhaps you, um, through their eyes, they're seeing something that we're not. So we try to capture that um, innovative spirit and, and think about uh, think differently about how we can solve um, solutions or problems that we might not even know exist. Um, and then finally, we have one um, more specifically tied to what um, our city um, or departments or authorities specifically needs, and that's addressing city challenges. So an example of one of those challenges we've issued in the past is um, helping us move away some, from some of our more antiquated systems. So our pencil and paper intake systems, how do we transfer something that we've kind of historically been doing into a more digital format and age? So to give you an idea of, of some of the workings that happened there. Um, startups get a plethora of benefits from working with us. Um, we have a few of them listed here, but the big one um, is really just the ability to test their products in a real world scenario. Um, PGH Lab is often referred to as um, the city's urban lab. Um, 
one of our uh, one of our mantras we have going on here is, is kind of um, fail fast, fail quickly. So if we can identify perhaps where those snags are with the companies, um, we can kind of help flush out utilizing our city resources, help flush out um, some of those and make a more smoother process. Um, we also have uh, access to uh, provide access to um, our city departments as well as our city authorities. There's actually five city authorities that we partner with. Um, the Urban Redevelopment Authority and the Housing Authority City of Pittsburgh, they're more focused on um, a housing and, and a little bit of an equity base there. We also partner with uh, Pittsburgh Sewer and Water Authority, as well as the International Airport and the Pittsburgh Parking Authority. So we kind of cover the gambit there. Um, and allow um, our startups exposure to those organizations in case there may be linkages um, beyond the program. Um, we've had a few companies find a more uh, permanent placement um, via contracts um, through this. I believe we're sitting at three companies that were successful in finding a contract. Um, our goal is long-term placement, um, but as uh, we also highlight here, our educational program and consulting uh, offerings through the program, uh, procurement can sometimes be tricky, um, as Colin had kind of mentioned with Glasgow. Um, for us, uh, what we try to do is we actually bring in our procurement officers and, and do a, a presentation and overview for the companies. So that way um, they have a better understanding of, of what exactly it takes to find um, long-term contracting work with the um, city. Um, since we are um, a government entity, um, here in Pittsburgh, we do have to put everything out for competitive bid. So we kind of walk them through the process of first identifying, you know, what is currently out for bid, um, and then the actual um, nitty gritty details of applying for said um, placement. We provide other resources as well, such as um, process improvement training. So are there, again, snags in their current process, optimizations that um, they perhaps didn't think of utilizing our um, subject matter expertise um, here at the city. The last thing we kind of offer um, is promotion on our platforms. So both um, utilizing um, the platform we hear uh, we have here at PGH Lab specifically um, to get the word out about the services that the city is undertaking, um, but additionally doing some cross um, departmental promoting. So reaching out to our parks uh, department to kind of um, highlight the efforts there, get the word out to residents um, about the innovative work that's going on here at the city. We do have a, a quick metric here um, at the right, and this was um, just kind of an antidote I wanted to include from um, our sixth cohort, um, and this is something that we're looking to continue in the future. Um, this kind of helps us communicate out to um, our executive leadership at the city here, um, as well as residents, um, what the real value of the program is. Um, it's it's great if we're able to add all this value to the city and find innovative solutions but if our residents don't understand the work that's going if we're not being good stewards of that educational resource um, it can kind of get lost in translation why this should continue and um, additionally why companies should really apply to the program um, so to pull out a couple quick metrics you can see um, we've uh, we're able to don't or generate uh, 2,400 plus hours of time from startups that um, was all volunteer basis. Um, the program is free. We don't um, offer any type of compensation, but um, as through the offerings mentioned, we do try to um, provide some benefit to the companies. And you can see there um, that the estimated labor that was donated um, from the startups there for this sixth cohort um, was well over $60,000. So lots of benefits for the city. Um, and we're currently, and my colleague, um, I allow my, may touch on this. Um, we're currently looking at how we can kind of take the model that we were um, provided and, and highlight and better um, improve our offerings for the future to hopefully um, tackle some of those challenge, challenges such as funding, such as um, what does perhaps a, an alumni group look like um, to better connect this uh, community of startups in our region. I'm going to turn it over actually back to Rebecca now, who's going to talk about some of the uh, startups we have running through our seventh cohort right now, and they're a little bit more circular economy focused, so I think it'll be a bit up the alley. Thanks, Trevor. Um, so yeah, so I mentioned I work in the Sustainability and Resilience Division, which is now out of, out of uh, the Department of City Planning, but we actually originally started out in the Innovation and Performance Department. Um, so, you know, when PGH Lab was first forming, we were able to 
you know, kind of sneak our way in there and add a climate uh, focus uh, for the companies. Um, and my colleague Afton is also uh, on the line and feel free to jump in if I forget anything. But so we've kind of been around from since the beginning of PGH Lab. Um, we've championed. So basically what, what happens is, uh, you know, they, they run a, um, you know, an RFP where the companies apply. Um, Afton sits in on all of the interviews. Uh, each company gives a pitch. Um, and then, uh, you know, we uh, help match make different departments or different divisions with uh, one of those companies. Um, so we've worked with uh, at least three or four over the past few years um, that have been, you know, pretty successful. Um, specifically uh, for this year, we're working with two. Um, so one is called Farm to Flame Energy. They have a shipping container model, which you can see on the left there. Um, but basically they have woody debris that comes in. Um, there's a generator inside, which turns that woody debris into either electricity or heat. Um, and then uh, we would use the, um, the heat or the electricity on the other side. Um, so, you know, originally we had a few meetings, they wanted to use it like a, like a, in, uh, instead of a, a diesel generator for like a building. Um, so we met with our facilities teams. Um, we were a little bit adverse to poking a hole into one of our buildings to get the heat in there. So, um, you know, we kind of, uh, rethought what it might be able to power. And now we're looking at, um, they actually just went and picked up a, electric vehicle charger uh, yesterday, and they're gonna try to hook it up to the shipping container. Um, we're thinking that we would deploy it uh, in our zoo's parking lot um, and open it up for, for public use. Um, so that, that way it gets a lot of visibility. Uh, we don't have to poke any holes into any of our buildings, which is uh, great. Um, and then, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest things is trying to figure out exactly uh, like what types of permits they're gonna need from our licensing and inspections division. Um, and then, uh, you know, any, any other, uh, you know, issues that might, that might pop up. Um, for the woody debris, we're really excited. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work around um, trying to figure out how to better use, find a higher and better use for our wood waste. Um, we currently have a company that uh, hauls it away. It either ends up in landfill or it ends up as mulch. Um, so we're trying to um, you know, get rid of that contract and think about how we could use it, how, how we could use our wood waste in, in more circular terms. Um, so this is one example of where we're going to be able to use uh, that woody debris um, to power this generator, which is then going to, uh, you know, create the electricity, which we can offer to the public um, for, you know, in theory, if we get through all the permitting phases um, uh, for electric vehicle charging, which is pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, and there's, you know, one of, one of the things that, uh, PGH lab does is it tries to like hold the business's hand through what could really be a very complicated permitting process. Um, so that's something that, you know, it, even if we don't get past that phase, at least now they have an, an idea of, you know, what is, what is the whole process that they need to go through in order to deploy this shipping container somewhere? Um, so that's Farm to Flame. We're super excited about that one. Um, and then the other one that we're working with this uh, semester, uh, this, this season, uh, is called Clupify. Um, so we've just started conversations with them. We're a little bit uh, earlier in the process, but um, basically they are working. We've partnered uh, you know, with, with our division, but then also with our procurement team. Um, and Clupify is going to develop a greenhouse gas inventory of all of our city procurement. Um, so they're going to look at capital and operating budgets, um, and then also some the contracts that we have, uh, you know, with like Office Depot and, uh, you know, those types of uh, entities for office supplies, um, as well as, uh, um, you know, fuel and uh, energy use, um, but they're going to develop an, an entire greenhouse gas inventory based on our procurement, which is really exciting. Um, you know, and we we currently produce a greenhouse gas inventory as the sustainability and resilience division every five years, um, but that does not include our procurement. It looks at um, citywide, uh, you know, transportation and energy and uh, waste. So this is really exciting to get us down to that very specific level of um, you know, what is the city's procurement? Like, what are we purchasing that's, um, and what is the greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, value of that? And how could we clean it up? 
Um, so we're really excited about these, these two um, programs this year. Uh, in the past, just to give you an example of you know, who we've worked with, we've, uh, we did a composting pilot um, project using city wood chips um, and city property uh, to handle food waste. Um, and then we also did uh, a worm bin in our city planning department. Um, so, you know, that worked out really well until one of our colleagues uh, had a, a Christmas tree with some sparkles on it that died and stuck it in the worm bin and the worms ate the sparkles and ended up also dying. So, um, you know, this is kind of uh, kind of a good example of, you know, that might not be the best, uh, you know, application for us um, or, you know, we need to improve our messaging and uh, you know, the, the worm return, which is the name of the company, I think has since uh, tweaked, you know, their uh, education uh, for their, their office um, operations for, for worm bins. But we're now working with that company actually to um, take compost from our uh, farmer's markets. So, you know, even if, even if the pilot itself doesn't necessarily work out, we're, you know, we also are then aware of what other types of offerings and services they might have. Um, that we could uh, partner up uh, and use in our procurement going forward. Um, and then I'm going to turn that over to Allah, who's going to talk about uh, future plans for, for PGH Lab. Thank you, Rebecca. And hi, everyone. My name is Adet Mohammed. I am the Senior Civic Innovation Specialist. I uh, run the PGH Lab program with my colleague Trevor in Innovation Performance. And so the last uh, couple slides, Rebecca and Trevor have told you all the amazing things about our PGH lab program. Um, but I am here to tell you all the things that are wrong with it and what needs to be improved because uh, in innovation performance, we say that uh, our process improvement is never over, right? So it doesn't matter where you are, you could always be better. Um, so right now our businesses uh, benefit greatly from the contacts that they get the city uh, with city departments. They get to test out their products. They learn a lot through trial and error um, by testing out their, their products hand in hand with the city. And then they also kind of learn what it's like to do business with the city. Um, and that's really valuable. Um, for the business. And from the city perspective, um, our city departments get to learn about the different innovations that are uh, happening outside of our, you know, city hall doorstep. Um, our, at least in the U.S., uh, government has a reputation for always being a little bit behind. Um, so this is a, a one way to make sure that um, building a process for government to actually be on the front lines of innovation and not just on the front lines of innovation, but helping to spur it. And then we know that small businesses are at the heart of our local economy. And we know that by helping our small businesses flourish, we know we're also helping the city of Pittsburgh flourish. And so, um, Rebecca, if you can click next on the slide, I got a little fancy, I did a little animation, but <laughs> um, what's next for uh, PGH Lab is to create pipelines that, that actually invest in our startups. And investing looks different for different businesses, right? So basically we're trying to take a more equitable approach with our, um, with our, with our program model. Um, different, uh, the, the things that, businesses gain from our program right now are great, but maybe that's not what um, all businesses need, right? So maybe what we need to do is to start outlining the different life cycle stages of businesses and um, figure out how we can offer something to each business in each different cycle, uh, depending on, or stage, I'm sorry, depending on what stage they are at. For some people, testing their product is exactly what they need. But what about those who are in an even earlier stage? We know that doing business with the city, um, you have to have insurance, you have liability insurance, you have to have all of this stuff that oftentimes small businesses are just learning to to, to figure out and get up off the ground. How can we help those businesses too? 
Um, we have amazing incubators in the city of Pittsburgh that we partner with outside of the city. So even if it's not us uh, doing this work, we can make sure that they are directed in the right place to help incubate those businesses um, and give them the resources they need. Um, in addition, we need to evaluate who are we currently reaching. Uh, we know that across the board, we have a lot of small businesses that are owned by minorities, owned by women, owned by disadvantaged groups. Um, and this is exactly the kind of the groups that we need to be focusing on to bring in through the door. So if we can, sorry, distracted. Yes, I'm wrapping up really soon. <laughs> um, yeah, so long story short, the things that we're trying to do is to create a procurement pipeline so that by the end of the engagement with the program, a city, the city can have an opportunity to not just have uh, collaborated one-off with these different businesses, but perhaps also continue doing business with them. Um, and then the other thing that we're trying to do is figure out how can we create a financial model for this program so that we can infuse money into the pockets of the startups to um, compensate them for their time. We know, again, that testing out your product is very important, but at the end of the day, it is still time that you're putting in. It's still uh, something that you should be compensated for. So those are some of the, the two ways that we are trying to be a little bit more equitable um, from both the procurement pipeline end and the um, financial compensation end. So I think I'm gonna end it here. Um, and we'll move into q a um actually this is afton from city of pittsburgh as well i just wanted to add really quick one of the best things about the program and one of the things that does help equity as well is that um we're able to you know allow for failure as part of the program and i know a lot of people are sort of afraid of failure but in, in this terms failure is a really huge benefit because it allows the companies especially when they're brand new in the market they're brand new working for the city they haven't had the opportunity to test their product at the scale that you know that a city would necessarily need to deploy um you know being able to know that something doesn't work is just as beneficial for them as knowing that something works perfectly so i think that that's some another opportunity that allows a lot of small businesses new businesses um, and businesses that just really haven't had that exposure in, in the future to be able to come in to test and know that it's not the end of the world if what they're bringing or what they're offering or what they think is was going to work great doesn't work so i just wanted to add that too Thank you very much, Rebecca, Trevor, and Ala. I agree with you. It's a very equitable approach to, invest, to enable a business environment to be more inclusive. And I thought it's also a very interesting approach to, to, to engage with business community by crowdsourcing uh, um, solutions uh, from, from, from smaller business. Um, so, so turning the city challenge into business cases, so to speak. So it's a very interesting strategy. Um, so, um, due to the time restraints, um, I would like to propose, and thank you, Mario. Um, uh, we would like to propose, we send you the last presentation by email and we will initiate an email chain. So you will receive some information uh, from today's presentation as well as the Tuku presentation. And we can also ask questions or ask for further information within this email chain. So that's, that's what I would like to propose because uh, I also don't want to rush through the presentation since it's really lots of interesting material uh, there uh, in today's discussions. Um, so, I would just like to also again open up some time for you to ask questions. I think, especially regarding to the uh, PhD lab for in Pittsburgh. Uh, so please come in uh, for questions. Hello, it's Colin. Regarding... Yes, Colin. Yeah, it's just, it's just the. I think the the last point that Afton made was was really uh, uh, interesting about allowing uh, allowing the space for for failure 
I think that's something that we in, in Glasgow have you know, uh, probably cowered from a wee bit. You know, I think the, the, the level of risk aversion can be a bit too much within the within the city. And we know that, you know, that innovation doesn't always hit off 100 percent every time. That there, there, there's going to be some collateral damage along the way. And I think uh, that having that space to to uh, experiment and and fail is uh, is really important for for any city. I think. Yes, totally agree with you. Is there any other other question? Because I I know the to 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 in, in enable a more inclusive business environment and to align the business community with cities climate goals, they are always also the focus for German cities. I'm wondering, do we have any question or comment from maybe Dortmund, Gersenkirche, or any of you if you have any questions for, for Pittsburgh? Well, um, at the moment, I haven't any question, but um, I totally agree. Um, it's a big point to have the opportunity to make a failure in the business case. And um, I would like to um, get more information in the future. Um, uh, for an example, um, from a company that had uh, a good idea, but um, did have some failure and bring up a better idea than before. Um, so um, an example, uh, I would like to appreciate to see it in the future. I think on this topic too, hi everyone, this is Kelly St. John from the city of Buffalo. Um, something we've seen success around this topic with the city was understanding where the best place to start what start is around equity and small businesses and then how that can contribute to sustainability and workforce development and so um a, a rather persistent issue we have in the city of buffalo is that our office space downtown especially our historic office spaces which i recognize historic in the u.s does not mean the same thing as it does in most european cities but um you know, we realized a lot of our historic office spaces and our historic storefronts were vacant and persistently vacant. And so we use this space um, as an opportunity to provide free rent to small businesses during peak times of the year. So Chris Christmas time, the holiday shopping season, but then also summertime when more people are out and more active um, in the, in the out, you know, in the environment um, to pro provide pop-up shops and free rent to small businesses as a way to help market their business and increase and drive revenues in a customer base, but also as a way to show the value of our existing built environment and infrastructure within the city. Thank you for your comment, Kelly. Um, so we have, I think, uh, approaching to the end of the session, but I would like to ask if any of us, can we can maybe allow one more last question to Pittsburgh or even to Glasgow? Okay, no problem. Yeah, so yeah, thank you all so much for your participation and for the presenter. Thank you for your really wonderful and for me very exciting material. Um, as I promised, we would initiate email chain, then we would um, um, pass uh, you the material um, presented today, as well as the presentation from Tuvu. And within this email chain, we can again have opportunities to ask questions or to connect or to ask for further information. And here I would like to also kind of announce the next two uh, webinar. So this is our first uh, webinar of the webinar series, and we are currently preparing for another two webinar. The second one will focus on co-creating circular city with local community. So um, uh, public engagement, community building will be the center of this topic. And the third session we will dedicate to the topic of enabling equitable access to resources and, assess and services. So, 
Um, here, of course, we invite you to participate the, 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 uh, these two sessions, and we are very much looking forward to see you again. And thank you for all your participa uh, participation, and wish you a very nice day. Thanks, Take everyone. Care, everyone. Bye Thanks, bye. Everyone. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks. Thank bye. You all.